Hi there, Will Rice with the Tips Team, bringing you another after school special. This week, we'll be continuing our series on AI tools and be discussing Google Translate. Believe it or not, Google Translate launched in 2006, making it one of the older AI tools that is in general circulation that many of us have already used. It's a multilingual neural machine, just a fancy way of saying artificial intelligence, translation service developed by Google to translate text, documents, and websites from one language into another. This technology is now embedded into Google Docs, a Chrome browser extension, and a number of mobile device apps. Some of these tools will even allow you to take a picture with your camera phone and have it translate the sign or information for you live right in the device. We're going to be jumping directly in to Google Translate and take a look at where you might encounter it and how you might use it. The first place you might use Google Translate is directly at translate.google.com. This is the home for the web-based version of this tool. And as you can see, it can do a number of things for us. It can translate text, passages, or just words typed into the box. As we can see here, it's set to English and English, but I can go ahead and pick a number of other languages in this case, I'll just grab French because uh, it's easier for me to have a better idea if it's been translated correctly. And as you can see, as I type in the box here, it will give me the French translation that the computer has generated. You can see here that you are limited to 5,000 characters. However, most students use this for passages or single words. You can also see an advantage of this is that when you type in the box on the left, for example, if we were to take the French and paste it into the box on the left, it auto detects to the best of its ability which language it was entered. So if you have a language you're trying to translate and you're not exactly sure what it is, you can paste it in here and if it may be able to determine the original language and translate it back into, an Eng into English if that's something you require. You can also upload images uh, um, or if you're using the mobile app, take a picture Documents, we'll talk about Google Docs, but this also works on PDFs, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, and other document types outside of Google. And you can even direct it to take you to a website to translate that website for you in its entirety. I'll demo that using the Google Translate extension, but just know that for a lot of cases, this Google uh, translate.google.com is a great place to start to get familiar with it. You might also notice that there is a play button. This will actually allow you to hear that word read back in that language if it's available. Another place we often can encounter Google Translate is using the Google Translate extension for Google Chrome browser. In this case, if I was on a English website, however, I told Google Translate that my default language or my first language was something else, I could simply select a word on the page click the Google Translate icon in the extension bar. And as we can see, it will take that word in English and provide it in this case in simplified Chinese. So in this way, if you are uh, new to English, for example, you might be able to quickly and easily um, highlight words on a website, such as domestic here, let's try this one. And get, some, uh, get that word in my first language in a written format. And again, I can click these buttons to listen to it in English and listen to it pronounced in that other language if available. The other option that you have on any website is to translate the entire page. That comes from opening the extension and just clicking translate this page. Now, in this case, it's not gonna automatically do this. It's going to show you another toolbar that pops up with the option to select the language you want for this entire page. Uh, let's try uh, French again in this case. As we can see, the entire page, including uh, the navigation, is quickly and easily translated. Graphic uh, in a language or like um, words put into a graphic, such as a, uh, a JPEG or something, those won't translate, but all of the text it can see on the page will. This is an excellent way for uh, students who maybe would like to um, follow through in one of their own languages to uh, do this if they feel more comfortable working in another language to go, or perhaps we're in a French program and the website we're using is only available in English, we can continue to work on our French skills by you know, translating the page. Now, we'll talk a little bit about some of the considerations at the end, but just know that this tool can be installed by students and staff as a Chrome extension, 
and then they can have these tools at their fingertips on pretty much every website they encounter. This is another tool that we can even share with our parents and families because this is a tool that will work on websites to help them, such as our school page uh, or even school zone. This will translate all the text that can be seen on those pages as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. The final place where Google Translate comes in is actually in Google Docs now. So if we had already prepared a document in Google Docs and for some reason we wanted to uh, you know, make a copy of this in another language, um, we would go ahead and just have the document prepared. We're going to click on the uh, Tools button and under Translate Document, we're going to go ahead and click that button. Uh, it's going to add, create a copy of this document for us and we're going to pick a language. Um, let's go ahead and pick, um, let's pick, I'm just going to stick with French because that'll give me the best guess as to whether it's fairly accurate. So I'm going to click French and I'm going to click Translate. Now note, this doesn't change that original document. It simply generates a brand new document with the translation written out in French in this case to the best of its ability. Now, as always with machine translation or AI, it's doing its best and it's getting better all the time. However, um, there will still be uh, the potential for errors. So having someone read this who is fluent in that other language would be a good bet. Um, and we'll talk more about that in the consideration section. From here, you'll notice it did not translate the title. That would be something for you to do. However, um, you know, it can be a quick way to uh, get some information to a student or family if they are fluent in another language. And that brings us back to the considerations. So let's think about this for a second here. Um, you know, it is becoming more accurate over the 16 years that it has been in operation, but it can make errors. Those errors can be significant. It can mix up a date or a number. And so if you're relying this on this as the only way to communicate, I would, I would consider really thinking a lot about that accuracy and having someone who is fluent look over that information for you. This works best on, this, on simple language. So um, the, the more basic the originating language for the translation, the easier it is for the machine to translate. So complicated language, big words, academic vocabulary can cause some issues for uh, the, uh, the AI engine that's running uh, Google Translate. I think it's really important that if you are going to use this to communicate with students or families, that you find a way to make very sure that anyone you're sharing documents with that you've used Google Translate with is very aware that it was translated by a computer and not a person so that they are aware that uh, any errors are not the errors of a person, but that just you, you were doing your best in the situation that you were provided in that getting that translation to them. Um, this can be a simple conversation at the beginning of the year, or even better, you can teach parents to use this tool themselves so that um, when they translate something you've sent uh, or their student does, uh, they're the one pushing the button so they know it's a computer doing it. Uh, and that's another way to kind of like make them very cognizant that um, Google Translate is doing the work here and not then you haven't actually translated it in that case. And as always, if you are sending home critical or very important information or having very important conversations with families about uh, their students in your classroom, a translator is always recommended. Um, relying on this back and forth through this back and forth translation is, is not, uh, not really a great way to have the important conversations or share critical information such as report cards, um, reports, and other things like that. For those, a translator is always recommended and even essential in those situations. I hope you enjoyed this video about uh, Google Translate as we continue con uh, sharing with you some more AI tools that uh, are in use in the division. Uh, we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you uh, hear more about uh, upcoming videos. Keep checking back for weekly videos. We're continuing on for a little while with our uh, videos on AI tools, including some new ones that are out there now for you. And always um, check on our tips.epsb.ca site to connect with your TIPS member if you have any questions about anything we shared in this video or if you have any uh, other ideas for um, AI tools that you're using. We'd love to hear from you about how you're using AI in your classroom to help you teach and students learn. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you with a new video next week.